Okay, so coming over to Nicholas uh, Carlucci. Nicholas, if you're on the line, I'm going to pass you the presenter status. And oh, I'm going to pass Wendy the, the presenter status. Wendy, you're going to be presenter, so get ready. Alani, can you hear me? This is Nick. Yeah, I can hear you. Awesome. Okay, so, and I want to make sure I can hear Wendy too. Sure. I'm going to introduce okay. Wendy and, and just kind of do the first overview. Okay, so Wendy has presenter now and you're speaking. Okay, so are we ready for me to start? Can you want to yeah. test the way make sure you can hear her? Yeah, um, she needs to show whatever screen she wants to show. She has presenter status. There you go. Okay. We can see it. Okay, go ahead. All right. All right. First of all, first of all, Lilani and Doug, thank you so much for this opportunity. Super excited to have a chance to speak to you guys. My goal really is, uh, Dr. Oliver and I, our goal is for awareness. Uh, at Edison Learning, most educators, I'm a former educator myself, principal, teacher, work for the State Department, and Wendy as well. Dr. Oliver spent an enormous amount of time so in the education space. So with Ed Tech, so Edison Learning was known as a managed school company. So most of the people on this call, I know there were 165 at one point, I don't know who we have left, but I know most of them who know Edison Learning know it from that space. But about seven years ago, uh, Edison Learning was purchased by uh, Mr. Jackson, Tom Jackson. He bought it and to take it towards the ed tech direction, more of online learning, blended learning, to be another option uh, for you know students and schools to have so not just, you know, just a couple companies out there that were another one that does that. So in doing that, he asked for two people to come join to help transform that direction. And those two people are myself and Dr. Wendy Oliver, who I'll turn over in just a minute. Um, so in that time, we've taken this company and, and, and put it on an LMS. So it's now, you know, it can synchronize with any LMS canvas, any LMS Blackboard, which you heard earlier. Also, we can talk to any SIS. So those who don't know Edison Learning of the, of the current, we are now a company that um, can serve any student in any place, any number of kids, scalability, the whole nine yards. And so that was really the goal is to really take Edison Learning in a different direction and go more to the space. During the pandemic, as you can imagine, it's exploded, the number of students who need online learning. In fact, so much so that we've decided to do some direct consumer. We've got a lot of parents contacting us, asking us, how do we, uh, get access to courses just by ourselves. So we have over 175 courses. We have CTE, we have um, we have courses in uh, AP, uh, we have access to other providers in K K5. So those on this call probably did not know that we we're in that space. So the goal really was two, one for awareness and two, to be speed dating and not see my day. No, I'm just kidding. But um, so anyway, I like to turn over to Dr. Oliver who is also an author of, of Not Your Mama's Classroom, uh, also a well-known figure in this space. Uh, she created a uh, blended learning profile that a lot of school districts use to find out if their teachers are ready for online learning and blended learning. Um, she came over and joined Edison Learning as a chief, chief learning officer, now really chief academic officer, really an expert in the space. When I was at Amazon, she came and sat on one of my panels and did a very nice job of, of, of talking about this industry. I know we don't have much time, down to about eight minutes, so I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Oliver. I'd like to introduce you to the team and, uh, and let you take over. Hi, thank you, Nick. Um, first of all, we have just had an, a fun journey with Edison Learning. Um, and I just want to share that and share that really today we're hoping to learn from you. Um, so it's a little bit of a different way to use our time today, but, but I'm very hopeful that we'll get some feedback and have a little bit of an interactive few minutes with you. A lot of the things that we've been pondering and wondering about with not only the direction to take the product, but also with the direction that the, the market is going, quite frankly, because of COVID. Uh, a lot of that I've heard today because uh, this is clearly a very innovative group. Um, so just being able to be uh, on with you all today has been a blessing as far as gathering new knowledge. So just I want to thank you for allowing us to be here and to participate in just already what we have learned from you today. I'm gonna, um, let's see, let's go into presenter mode. I assume my audio is okay. Um, and I did, um, for the other presenters, I had to unplug my external monitors and use my built-in microphone instead of the external one. So that may be why you're having some problems with audio, I don't know. Um, 
hopefully this will work. What we really want to do is, as we're evaluating some of the products that we currently have, also um, we're really interested in building and creating some amazing products that can be released to help some of these children get caught up. Um, and I, I've heard some things today about that you're now able to do things with a little more flexibility than you've had in the past. Um, and, and we're really hoping to get some information from you. So um, I've created a poll everywhere. And if you can see the screen, it tells you where to go. Um, and the first time you go in, you'll have to enter Wendy Oliver 827. Um, and you have to text that to 22333 to join. And we have nine slides where we're just going to ask some questions to get some feedback and see um, kind of where the group is. And these are questions we're asking our clients um, and, and other folks that we're in conversations with. Um, today I heard some, some things about um, mastery based learning um, in Idaho, for example. Uh, and I'm wondering, um, because this legislative session hasn't rejoined yet. Um, do you think you're going to be beholden to seat time or do you think mastery based learning is something that um, you'll be able to implement to get these students caught up or to move them through their content more quickly so that they can graduate with their original cohort if if they missed too much content because they were out with COVID. Uh, we currently offer mastery based courses or where students take um, a pretest or a diagnostic, so to speak. And based on that, they're put on a prescriptive pathway. Um, we also offer traditional courses as well, um, two versions of the same thing. And so um, it's very, very interesting and very curious to know uh, from my perspective, as we develop new products to try to respond to the current crisis that we're in, uh, really, what direction do we go with that? Do we continue? Um, do we know if seat time is something that you're still going to be beholden to? I just want to take a minute and see how these answers are coming in. And I know a lot of this is probably going to depend on the state. Uh, I also know that some directors of schools are saying without saying, and I know it was a situation that I have been in the past, uh, it's a little gray. Right. We can re you could respond to that question probably differently. Um, um, maybe not on paper, <laughs> um, but but you could find a way to put a student through and, and kind of make that seat time gray um, if it would be in the best interest of the child. So, yeah, it kind of looks like we're still a little bit all over the place here. OK, but that's still that's still helpful to know just. It's hard to know when you're when you're out of the when you're out of the uh, public school system. It's, it's hard to know. You want to gauge and make sure that you still have a good grasp on things. And the best way that I find is just to ask, quite frankly. So, you know, then, then there's a the question of assuming things. And this is a big assumption. Um, things go back to normal in May. You know, once I heard March that children could get the immunization um, and then I've heard May. So who knows? Um, who knows that they will? But this is kind of an assumption of things are back to normal at the end of spring. Uh, are you considering extending the traditional school year um, so that you could complete the spring semester? Are you considering having a traditional summer session term? So summer school, for example, um, or something altogether different? Or, or maybe, and I guess if you haven't thought that far ahead because everybody's trying to survive day by day, may, maybe the answer is other. I would. 100% other. <laughs> yeah, I would love on this one for those of you who marked other, and my contact information will be at the end of this, if you would be willing to just reach out and kind of share with me what you're thinking. Because if, if there's any way that we can support or develop what's needed, or we may, we may have an existing product, you know, like Nick said, this, the company, um, is over 20 years old. And so there are so many ways in which we can retool some things in order to meet needs, um, which is the, the beauty of digital content. And so um, if we don't know what the need is, um, then then we don't know how to help there. But um, it, it, if there's an opportunity, we would love to be able to help. Um, it's just, you know, we don't really know what's happening in every single state. Um, and this is such a unique situation. Um, our goal is to partner and to serve. That's very much part of our, our vision and our mission of the company. Um, so uh, if you would be willing just to share with me uh, or at least to educate me on, on what you're thinking of doing there, I would be um, very much appreciative. 
Wendy. Uh huh. It's Leilani. Um, since we're having some issues here and we only have a few minutes left with you guys, um, can we just ask you a few questions about uh, Edison Learning and kind of what your what your play is and going forward? Yep, that would be fantastic. Nick, yep. do you want to speak? Yeah. To that? Yeah, I can uh, speak to anything. Any questions you have? Love that. Yeah. So, so really, here's the thing that we've been hearing the most as Learning Council about what's going on out there is is there's a lot of gaps in what schools can provide and particularly the gap of trying to woo back in the homeschoolers like you heard us talking about with Mountain House um, from Lammersville. They've got a formula. I mean, ben has a formula. And so talk to us about sort of the, the ready, set, go posture of what you're offering for Edison because I think that's gonna be really interesting to a lot of people they could they could tag team with Edison Learning to sort of set up that go to market um, to draw kids back in. So when you say that, Lalani, you're speaking to the homeschool market or the market in general? A homeschool or you know regular school. It's like it, it's it's the readiness factor for a good 50% of the schools and districts that are that are they're still in scramble mode. They're trying to build all their own stuff. So their go-to-market uh, readiness of what they can offer in uh, distance virtual remote learning is not there yet. And that, that actually advances the risk even higher of losing kids. So right. what we see Edison doing is be, you know, sort of swooping in in a partnership way. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. So what, you want me to take some of this, Wendy, and pass it to you, you want to start? Yeah, you go ahead. Uh, so one of the things we're doing to really help the homeschool market, because we know parents are trying to play teacher. In some cases, that's great. In some cases, we know the parent is not or is not equipped to do that, right? Um, so what we've done is we're going to direct consumer and we're pushing out our content so parents can individually purchase our content. We have learning coaches, meaning there's somebody on the other side that will help coach and help that parent support that child and whatever that may be. Some parents are going to reach out and say, I need algebra one and I only need the first semester of it, or I only need quadratic equations, or I only need certain parts of the content. And so those parents in the homeschool market will actually have access to content close to 200 courses that they can buy bundles, they can buy individual courses, semesters. Uh, so that's the homeschool market, which is uh, slightly different than getting into the, the traditional LEAs there, we're, we're supporting them in anything they need. And the reason why we wanted to go through this entire ex this exercise was to learn more about this audience. And they're, they're really out there today, and we're not as current as they are, to feel what's going out there during this pandemic inside of these school systems. Of course, we couldn't go forward. But so, yeah, so we're, we're doing marketing campaigns, reaching out to every school district in the United States, trying to, you know, most schools line do not know Edison Learning in this space. So, this, so we need to do more things like with this with you so that we can make the awareness there. But yeah, we're reaching out to every parent group there is, uh, every single uh, homeschool market. There's homeschool organizations where homeschool parents come in and they work together in groups. We're reaching out to all of those. We just started that campaign. I, mean, I, mean, I think I mean like your partnership to mimic the homeschool arena for a district, right? Because that's what Ben has, has done in Lammersville. Um, he's brought even more value than you could get as a homeschooler. So it's that, that was, that was my last point. And I'm sorry, we're, we're almost out of time. So. Um, I would, I would say that's similar to some of the partnerships that we have in Tennessee, for example, where the district has a full-time virtual school uh, specifically for families that want to homeschool, mm -hmm. but they may not have the capacity to run that school. And so we come in, we offer the curriculum, we do all of the training, that they have the option to use their teachers, or if they want, we have a, a full-time teaching staff as well, and they can use our teachers, uh, because it's very hard to go overnight to having a, a full-time virtual program. And so we partner with them, and that way, rather than the district losing their full-time students to a, a for-profit homeschool, for example, um, or just to homeschool in general, losing them, they're able to keep them within the district and collect funding, but we partner as a provider um, and, and we do the heavy lifting, quite frankly, um, but offered as a service to the district. Okay, excellent, excellent. That's kind of what I wanted to get to with you guys and I'm super proud of, of Edison Learning, what you're doing.